so hi guys uh, welcome to to everybody all the uh, 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 people on the channel and uh, just starting off uh, this uh, second session of my episodes uh, so hi guys uh, welcome to, to everybody so episodes with uh, with great people successful people people who have been in the industry done been there done that and uh, uh, welcome welcome all of you to the to the session and today we have got a very interesting uh, person and my my uh, association with guru murthy goes back goes back to again 1993 95 when we were together at uh, the batch of uh, of uh, of class of class of 90, 95 so to say at i am bangalore and uh, uh, both of us came into uh, this thing one thing common between guru and me is that we are both mechanical engineers uh, and uh, obviously our lives diverge quite a bit uh, you you guys know a lot about me in, in terms of my work around cat and aptitude testing but gurumurthy uh, after his mechanical engineering from nit calicut uh, and then mba from i am bangalore in the 93 95 batch he's got 25 years of sales and marketing experience in the oil and gas sector and and the energy sector uh, i guess one of the most uh, important uh, uh, sectors uh, in uh, in the economy these days and specifically i think under under covid uh, situation one of the sectors that has got uh, very majorly affected as we get to keep hearing on the news uh, these days so i guess you have got a much much more ringside view over that uh, guru and guru currently is the ceo of digital solutions g and g oil and gas so uh, guru first of first of all that sounds a lot of uh, lot of uh, greek to me what what do you do well, let's 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 start with that okay uh, thanks uh, arun for inviting me to this forum uh, uh, so uh, what i do is um, i sell uh, a lot of hardware uh, and a bit of software uh, to the downstream oil and gas uh, industry in india plus a few more sectors like um, automotive uh, electronics manufacturing and and probably process industries uh, we sell uh, mainly sensors for vibration monitoring uh, critical assets like a gas turbine or a, or a compressor or a pump Uh, you can actually look at the health of the equipment by looking at the vibration of the of the of the equipment so that's one business i've always been in the b2b space so i sell control systems for again rotary equipment uh, uh, at unit level or at plant level i sell some uh, non destructive testing equipment again for aviation uh, for uh, for uh, for automotive industry and we also work with a lot of clients like reliance kane for their upstream uh, uh, oil field exploration and oil field services equipment that's what i do for a living now. great great to hear that so uh, my first question to you is i mean uh, of course you 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 do belong to one of the top uh, engineering colleges in the country also nit calicut is of course one of after the iits it's one of the most prestigious colleges so was it a breeze for you right through education but uh, were you always one of the top guys not really uh, uh, arun because uh, when i was in college uh, i had done reasonably well in college i didn't get through cat in my first attempt uh, was sure. a, bit, a bit of a surprise uh, i got couple of uh, tier 2 colleges but one good advice that i got from a family friend who happened to just come into my home that evening when i was deciding whether i should take those tier 2 tier 3 colleges he says guru uh, if ever you want to do an mba go and do it from one of the top tier institutes and those days it was only I am. There was no ISB. There was nothing else. So there was only I am. So he says, "Don't compromise. Go and give yourself a couple of years of work experience. Uh, work hard. Go and do an MBA from the I am." And I, I took that advice. And in hindsight, I think was was a good decision because after graduation, I worked for two years and I got uh, I am in my third attempt. So wow, perseverance. Uh, so perseverance always pays off. I never gave up. I said I was working. I was working in sales. Uh, Uh, working my backside off, uh, traveling on a motorbike, selling abrasives uh, to uh, industries in, in in Delhi, but I came back, studied in the evening, and got through in my third attempt. Arun. Okay, so you you do advise perseverance as one of the major factors uh, that the people should absolutely. Take. I I completely endorse that, Arun. In Thank fact, uh, that's something which is very very res uh, resonant to what I tell my students about uh, their CAT attempts and their attempts into MBA. MBA in a lot of ways is your last uh, last is last degree. it's the last uh, educational stop in your educational career so even if you had an average uh, uh, life uh, in terms of academics before somebody like you obviously was was better than that but for me it was a very average uh, 
uh, academic career before coming into IIM. So I tell my students now, and I tell anybody who cares to ask me at this at this stage, where people are looking at how to build their career, you make your last degree the best best possible one. Absolutely. And uh, what your uh, what you discovered through your uh, advice from the family friend, as you say, was very very syn syn synchronistic with what what I was talking about here. So so I think that's that resonates. So uh, now you are at the top of the corporate sector, almost literally in your in your company. What do you look for? A lot of lot of the people who are going to watch this, etc., are going to be young career uh, aspirants or people in the first two years. The the guru of the 1991-92 selling uh, glass uh, in Delhi, as you said. So what do you, what do what what do you look for in those people when you when you hire and uh, when you when you interview? Okay, so I'm quite sure you must be taking a lot of uh, interviews. One, uh, a uh, uh, critical aspect is you got to be a hard worker. I mean, so you got to see evidence of somebody who's really worked hard in their previous academic career or in their previous jobs that they have, they have done. So I always felt uh, hard work uh, will always triumph talent. So that you can't, you can't work. It's like an entry ticket into, 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 the, into, into the game. Second one is something which I've always been passionate and uh, sort of uh, look at is uh, how good is of a team player will that person be? Uh, you might not be the best in terms of uh, talent, but are you a team player? The premium on, on, on being a team player is, is something very, very critical. So those are two critical aspects that I've always looked at uh, uh, in terms of when I look at uh, people. And when people come into, into an organization, means uh, you spend a few years, uh, things like how do you get promoted? How do you get nominated for training, for example? Uh, are some of these aspects or traits, if you display that in abundant uh, measure, you will always get ahead. So uh, premium on being a team player is something which is, which is absolutely non-negotiable in, in, in any corporate setting. So two things you're talking about, uh, which you look at the top, uh, hard work is number one. Absolutely, it's like an entity. Team player is, is, absolutely. is yeah, absolutely. top of your, uh, top and, of your check with anybody coming into your team. And, and the assumption is somebody who's uh, obviously uh, done reasonably well academically. I'm not saying, uh, and uh, uh, these are sort of two critical aspects. Apart from, is, of course, is a, is a parameter of how hard you work at in a lot of absolutely. Things. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, right. Very nice. And so, so you you were mentioning to me that before on on our off uh, off uh, offline chat that you you wanted to to make a small presentation about your learnings in the last twenty five years. Yeah. So what I've done, Arun, is uh, uh, I mean, since uh, I've been thinking about what should I share with this team, right? There are probably these these are your students who go to get into a business school. Uh, Probably this year, when there is when the when the when the uh, COVID situation improves, and probably get into uh, into a corporate life subsequently. So what I was thinking, I will let share my own learnings uh, over the last say 25 plus years. This is what's worked for me, uh, because when you go into into a business school, you will become part of teams. You will have to deliver projects. You will have to deliver uh, assignments in, as, as as a group. So some of the learnings that I picked up, uh, and sort of that's what I wanted to share. So I'll probably share one slide and then we can probably take questions before I sort of uh, go on to building on the concept of how being a team player is very important uh, and then sort of share a few stories uh, from that I picked up over the, uh, over the last few years. So to, uh, to the larger audience, right, um, the message that I want you to give is one is uh, if you, especially given the situation that we are in, right, it's like a doomsday situation uh, uh, where if you trust all the WhatsApp messages, all the newspapers and the television channels, it seems that the world is going to come to an end. I mean, so, uh, trust me, uh, the, the sun will rise tomorrow. Uh, it will rise the day after. Uh, and this too shall, this too shall pass. So what will define us collectively? As a, how do we, how did we, uh, what will define us? How do we get out of this crisis? So being positive is, is one aspect. That's the sort of first message that I would sort of give your team. And from my own learning, so, so what I'm going to do is to share my screen. So let me know if you could sort of, can sort of see my screen um, for a minute, just give me a minute. And uh, if you can open uh, the YouTube channel, uh, you can see yourself live there. And uh, if, if you have that, oh, oh, that oh, I oh, read the questions that are coming from the student, from people. Uh, uh, Arun, can you make me a presenter for some reason that icon has disappeared? Okay. Uh, let me just check, uh, how do you do that? Maybe because I'm live on. Oh, sorry. I, I, can, I can share my screen now. I can, I can share my screen. Yeah. Are you seeing my screen now? Yeah, we are. We are. 
So uh, again, uh, so my sort of two cents, right? One is we talked about hard work, right? Uh, hard work is something that's uh, always worked for me. I mean, it's, it's like an entry ticket into the into the, into the into the into the stadium. Uh, persistence. We have talked about persistence. How persistence is important uh, over 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 a long time. Uh, what you must all remember is that a career and many uh, and I keep getting these questions in, in the various discussions that I have with young people. Uh, I've said uh, a career is not a hundred meter sprint. Uh, you got to look at it's a it's a marathon. Means you got to work for probably thirty plus years, and look at your career in chunks of three to five years. Uh, there are some times where you will get ahead, and I can speak from my own personal experience. When I graduated in ninety five, um, I had a car. By the time it was uh, March '96, so nine months out of I am Bangalore, I had a car. Means, and those days I was the first guy in my family to own a car. I thought I had arrived in life, and I really made it in life. Then a couple of years later, I realized I wasn't really the cat's whiskers. There are people who sort of got ahead of me. So eventually, when I sort of review my career in chunks of three to five years, there are some times where you will get ahead. There are some times where you will fall behind. But as long as you're in the sort of, there will always be this exception. The 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 what I would call the uh, the outliers who will go and set up a startup and make billions of dollars. But as long as you're in the median range uh, and you're not far off, you must feel, feel relatively happy about it. Uh, what's worked for me is uh, career is like a jigsaw puzzle, right? Uh, and the more diverse the experience that you get, and the more risks that you take early in your career, that that helps. Uh, so. Uh, uh, for me, in my case, for example, I moved to the Middle East for a few years. Uh, I went and spent some time in China. Uh, and, and if you can do it early in your career where you don't have too many commitments from a family perspective, that helps sort of build your CV and makes it make, uh, uh, more stronger. Uh, mobility is a great differentiator. I've seen people uh, who don't want to move because uh, of they, have a, they are anchored to a particular city or a town or, or a particular geography. Uh, they don't get ahead. So if you're mobile, that helps get you ahead in your career because mobility is something that that companies really value uh, in, in in whatever roles that that you're in. Uh, networking uh, again, that should be critical part of your work plan. Means uh, people don't network enough, especially in in any corporate setting. Even if you want to set up your own business venture, uh, networking should be should be part of your should be part of your your work plan. Uh, what what's worked for me is uh, advertising good work. I mean, sometimes we assume that our work will get noticed, uh, and don't make it, uh, don't do it shamelessly. But if you've done some good work, uh, especially tell it to your to your leaders, to your line managers, to your one over ones, and ensure that the the work, good work that you do gets gets recognized. Uh, what's also worked is uh, uh, if you've surrounded yourself with 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 people who are better than you. Uh, and and again, give you an example. So when, for example, when India plays, uh, say Australia, in in, in cricket, for example, uh, the the whole performance of the whole team goes up dramatically. Well, because one is you competing with 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 uh, with, a, with a superior team, so you sort of tend to raise your game. So when you are with a with a with a with a peer group, which is significantly better than what you are, you will raise your own game itself. And especially this is true for students who get into business school, especially the the top tier ones, because you're competing with people who are going to be as good or better than than what you are. So when you surround your peer group with people who are better than you, your own performance will go up. So make a conscious effort to sort of get together with friends, with, with people who are better than you. It will sort of improve your own skills. And it's worked for me in, in my own life. But as, as I've progressed over the last, say, 25 plus years, right, your motivation also changes. Uh, what's important in, when you're 30 is not probably what's important when you're, in, 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 at, when you're 45, probably. probably. So understand what's important in that phase of your life, and you got to understand what would you let go because it's very rarely that you get to do all of it. So you got to prioritize and say, "This is what I'm not willing to compromise. This is what I'm willing to let go." Uh, that's something that's that's critical. You and that's a very very personal decision. And finally, you got to look at what motivates you. And the choice of a career. Uh, some people are motivated by money. Some people are motivated by being uh, by doing good. So you got to understand what's what motivates you, and then then work towards. That, that's what would be my advice to all the people who are listening on, on this call. So wonderful. That was, that was great to hear. In fact, uh, this is a very structured distinct. A couple of things that come to mind, my mind when I look at, uh, look at something like this is, first of all, you talk about networking and we had Gaurav who was our bashmate also last week uh, on the show. And uh, he was also mentioning the same thing that relationships is his number one, uh, this thing. And we are talking about two very, very diverse industries. You are in sales and marketing and, and hardcore uh, industrial sales, as we used to call it at these schools. 
and uh, Gaurav was in the IDFC uh, consumer marketing. Uh, uh, obviously, his his role is directly talking to customers and consumers and uh, uh, mutual fund sector and, and in both these industries. So networking is one of the most uh, critical. Uh, I mean that that's coming out as one of the most important things. The other thing I can I can uh, I can uh, relate to very importantly, and this is something. Uh, if you know, I have written that book uh, called. Uh, the equation of success, which is not very successful by itself, because I got I went to the wrong publishers for it. But uh, I have talked about about uh, something called the circle of mediocrity there, and I think uh, this idea uh, resonates exactly there. So what I have talked about there is that when you when you set small goals for yourself or mediocre outcomes for yourself, or mediocre challenges for yourself, what you happen is what will happen is that you start surrounding yourself with mediocre people. And when you start surrounding yourself with mediocrity around you, then uh, even mediocre performance will be appreciated. You will get a lot of pats on the back for mediocrity. Yeah. Okay. And then when that starts happening, the side, the circle of mediocrity gets completed. Absolutely. And once that is completed, then you 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 live your whole life on that circle of mediocrity. Whereas if you if you keep uh, yourself around smarter people, you will always uh, always improve. And and that also takes me to a, to an example from sports. I remember uh, when we were kids, uh, uh, India had a, had one of the, in fact, now people know him much better because of his daughter, Deepika Padukone's father, uh, Prakash Padukone. Yeah. I remember uh, he used to train in Denmark uh, with Morten Frost, and he had gone there specifically, and he, he was in world number one at that time, Prakash Padukone, in badminton, and he had specifically gone to Denmark to train with the top uh, players there, so that he could improve his game. Because he was not getting anybody good enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I was. You were also mentioning to me that you also wanted to talk a little bit about about uh, some examples from sports. So maybe it's a good cue for you to take take that up. Yeah. Hey, so uh, what I wanted to do is to this team, right? To this people of young people, uh, sort of to to make it meaningful in terms of you sort of dialed in. So how do I sort of make it relevant for for folks who have dialed in? So one thing that's uh, and I, uh, one more thing, I'll just cut you there a little bit. I would just want to be on the slide for a couple of more minutes. Yeah. Because a couple of more thoughts are coming to my mind yeah. here when I look at this. One is uh, when you talk about adver advertise your hard work. So how do you advertise it? Well, the, what what is? Would you like to tell the answers here? Uh, what does? What do you mean by that? Would you want to so, go so, uh, into that? So, so what happens, Arun, is culturally, right? Uh, uh, and especially uh, yes, culturally, we are very uh, very very used uh, to introverted, meek. Yeah. We assume that. We assume that uh, you do your hard work and uh, people will notice you and, and will get you ahead. Uh, might not be true in, in at, at all times, especially when you're working in a multicultural, multi uh, in a matrix organization, probably in a large organization. It's important that uh, uh, you do good work, but you advertise it. And when I say advertise it, don't do it shamelessly. Do not become a, sort of a self-propagating sort of a sort of a machine where people don't trust you. You go to back up. What you do with 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 substantial work means if you if you're only sort of projecting work and not actually having stuff behind it that gets noticed pretty quickly. So, if you've done some good work, make that effort to connect with your manager, but one over one as well. Because typically, when, when things like uh, I said uh, uh, promotions, when things like nominations for for some training courses for leadership courses come up, it's always important to combine the networking that you've done with the fact that you've done some good work because if it rings a bell with the guy who's reviewing your your application it it always helps but i think it's 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 it's, it's a very subtle art when some people take it to the extreme and it becomes very very uh, a bit very disgusting so but i think keep it keep it to a to to, to a minimal to ensure that you you are you, you get noticed but also keep keep a balance around it and back it up with solid work so that when reviews come up you you get noticed for the work that you've done Fantastic. So, uh, so, so great. So, you want to move on to the sports stories that yeah, you want so, to do? Uh, so, what, what did I want to do is, I mean, we talked about how uh, you will, as I said, all of these young people will become part of uh, teams. So, one of the things that's always fascinated me is, uh, uh, is how do you build high performance teams? Uh, uh, and again, uh, sports is a great example of, of 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 giving you stories and giving you where you can you can pick up pick up learnings. There are some teams that have done consistently well over a, for a long period of time. So you wonder what makes these teams do well for, in, in, in such phases. Uh, so one of the things, one of the sort of couple of characteristics of high performance teams, and there are many of them, and I've sort of picked up just two of them. One is all of these high performance teams put a premium on, on achieving uh, 
team goals versus individual goals. That's number one criteria. And the second characteristic that these teams sort of exhibit is uh, they take care of their teams, especially when they are down. So these are two specific sort of teams that I'm picking up and saying, when you become part of teams, this will become, people will judge you for what you bring to the team. And so this, and, and I'm going to sort of give uh, real life examples. And I've picked uh, cricket as, uh, as, 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 as stories. And probably we can, we can draw some lessons from a team environment and from a, from a corporate setting. So my first story, uh, and it's going to be probably a couple of minutes, uh, uh, Arun. So yeah, yeah. Ed, uh, we are says, all uh, wanting to hear this. Uh, it's, it says the, the title of the story is, is not about the eye. Uh, so let me just uh, sort of flash this. So this picture that's there on the screen, hopefully you can see this picture. Yeah, yeah we can. Uh, this probably, most of you would have seen it. This is a picture of the under 19 cricket team. Uh, as soon as they won the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the World Cup in, in New Zealand. So as soon as these guys win the, uh, win the tournament, right? The, the BCCI, they announce an award of 50 lakhs for this man on the screen, Rahul Dravid, because he was a head coach and uh, 20 lakhs for all the, the entire support staff, which is the, the fielding coach, the bowling coach, the, the, the physiotherapist and, and all the physical trainers. As soon as this announcement was made, uh, Rahul was slightly uncomfortable about he was getting a bigger reward than the rest of the team. Uh, because he felt that uh, the success was not because just him, but because of all the support staff that were there along with him uh, during, the, during the journey. So he went back to BCCI and said, this is not fair. And he would want everybody to get the same award. Uh, BCCI was obviously very surprised. They said, but they relented and everybody got 25 lakhs each. Means eventually, uh, Rahul's awards were, were, were half. And he got 25 and the rest of the support staff was, was got 25 lakhs each. This was uh, a very selfless gesture. Um, um, and, and Rahul was trying to make a point over here. And the point was success is very rarely achieved because of one man. It's always a collective team effort. It's just not Virat Kohli. It's just not uh, just with Broomra. But if you have to win, it's, it's, it's a collective effort. The, uh, the other, uh, and all of us have admired Rahul Dravid for, for, for his batting. Right. And now for the the great service that he's rendering to the team uh, by developing the next generation of, of young cricketers. Uh, but this was not, he was not being popular. Let's not get this wrong. He was not being popular over here. Means, uh, the same Rahul Dravid, when he was the captain of the Indian cricket team, he declared, I don't know if some of you remember, uh, when Sachin was batting on 194, he actually went ahead and declared the, the India innings closed. Yes, I remember that, yes. This was in Pakistan. And he was taken to the to the cleaners for his for such really? his double century. I think, I think people talked about it for a month almost. Uh, but the point place. there again, Arun, was if you remember, the the emphasis was on India winning the Test match. It was not Sachin getting to his to his to his to his, to his milestone. So uh, so it's, 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 so the point I'm making is it's, uh, uh, it's so Rahul. It's not about a, a, a popular leader might not be a, a an, an effective leader. So it's not about being popular. It's about being over effective. Again, let's let's take the example of New Zealand, for example. New Zealand, again, uh, uh, they don't boast of a Sachin or a Virat Kohli or a Lakshman. But this group of individuals, the New Zealand cricketers, right, they've consistently punched much about their weight. Yeah. Uh, same with Afghanistan today, for example. Uh, Afghanistan seemed to be giving uh, all these established cricketing nations a run for their money. The point some of these teams do well is because they've always placed a premium on winning collectively. I think that's the point that I want to. And if you sort of pick up the learnings from, from a, from a, from a, from a, from a, from a, from a team setting or from a corporate setting, one is uh, they've always believed in milling and milling together. The idea is to win the war, but not to chase individual glory. The, the sum of the parts is always bigger. The, the, the whole is always bigger than the sum of the parts. The second part is, uh, and again uh, I've said this. Uh, let's look at it from from a corporate setting. When if you win a big order or if you complete a project, there's always this. There's always this. Uh, I would say temptation to say I did it. It's it's very rarely I did it. It's always your 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 extended team could be supply chain, could be marketing, could be sales, which would have helped you win and win an order or execute execute an order. The same thing. Uh, uh, the point is when a when a team wins, the individual always wins. But the converse is very rarely true. You might get a century. You might you might get a you might score a double century, but you might eventually end up on the losing side because an so individual. You you lost so in, so and then you you've said this Virat Kohli always says this I I, started, I scored a century but we didn't win the match so it's not about individual targets or individual glory it's about did we win collectively is, is what what some of these teams so what people look at and the message to to all of these young boys and girls uh, on the call is 
always ensure that you are a team player means and that's a, that's that's very critical when you are evaluated especially uh, and you will you will get evaluated whether you like it or not one of the thing that people look at is are you a team player uh, and that's that's one of the as I said is is a critical criteria for you to get ahead so that's my first story of uh, uh, arun let me just sort of spend a few more minutes on the second part of the same same story one is and and i've written a blog around this on linkedin so if you're interested you can take a, go and take a look at it yeah i'll definitely put the uh, the link in the video the uh, blog thing uh, so uh, the second story is about how much price do you put on your wicket uh, this is a picture of of ishan sharma and the context is uh this is uh, mohali i think 2010 we are playing australia and india is chasing uh, 216 to win in the fourth innings and anybody who follows cricket would know that chasing any score in the fourth innings is difficult uh, not surprisingly uh, uh, india lose their way and by the time ishan sharma walks in uh, we are about 92 runs short of of the of the target uh all of us who were watching the match especially i was watching this match in the in my office uh, i had given up hopes i said this guy this match is a, is a, is a goner but uh ishan sharma he sort of he fights and he fights as if his, his life depends on it and he puts together uh, an 81 run partnership with with bbs lakshman uh and uh, by the time he gets out we are still 11 runs short of uh, the target but we managed to win the uh, the, the match and we retain the gavaskar border trophy Uh, so Ishan, you know, is not a is not a great batsman. I mean, so, uh, yeah. And uh, when he was asked about his, his innings uh, later, right, and he said, "I take my bowling seriously, but I take my batting equally seriously." I Means after everybody has done their nets, I actually practice, especially for these critical series. I actually practice with a tennis ball uh, on a on a on a on a concrete pitch to ensure that I can handle the pace and and, and the bounce. Yeah. The point I want to make here is, what does this tell you about the character of this man? he could have easily said i'm a bowler my job is to go and bowl and it's for the batters to go and get the runs he could have very easily rationalized about it but then you could be a renault you could be a messi you could be a ronaldo you could say i am a forward my job is to score goals it's somebody else's job is to defend but given the context in which we are operating right it's no longer good enough to say i'm a specialist you got to attack and you have got to fall back and and help your team defend so from a from a corporate setting and again from a from a team setting right it's good good it's not good enough to say i did my part I means you could be part of a of a team and says i have done my part it's for somebody else to go and do the rest this doesn't work in any corporate setting you got to be a specialist and a generalist as well and just as ishan right especially when you are part of teams i would say spend a lot of time in non game engagement I means when you are not in the in a deal when you're not in a in a in a big project actually go and reflect and how can you improve yourself for example this is a good time to improve yourself the downtime during 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 the covid crisis what are you doing to improve your skills to be able to get ahead when 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 things open up and i've always believed that customers and competitors they make you better especially in my case i've never feared customers or competition because they are, they are obviously there to sort of get, get you better and and finally in this case he didn't take no for an answer while all of us had believed that the match is lost this guy said i will not give up and that's probably the reason why 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 india won this won this won this test match so don't ever give up persistence and 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 and, and sort of uh, uh, will always will always ensure that you you meet your goal so if you permit arun this just one more sort of yeah, uh, sure. share and then we can very educated uh, everybody take the questions and this is a story of it says will you take a bullet for a teammate and this is relates to the point that i was making is a high performance teams ensure that you can take care of your teams especially when your team member is down means it's 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 very rarely that everybody all cylinders fire there will be always somebody who's who's which who's not doing well so how do you ensure that you're able to take care of your team in in when they are when they are down is will will matter when 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 the when the when, when, when the bigger 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 goals are are, are that to be achieved and the story that i'm going to talk about this is probably there in social media i've just picked it up from which has become got a new life this is the famous u2 uh, band right uh, this is uh, bono uh, adam clayton larry mullen and the edge uh, so while they were still in uh, college uh, this is late 70s they they formed this band uh, and uh, they released their first album and they get very very famous but their lead guitarist especially uh, adam clayton he had a slight depression problem as a teenager Uh, but uh, uh, as they became popular because of fame because of money and because of the travel he got into an alcohol problem uh, uh, the group could have said uh, 
it, it was became very difficult for us for the group to work with 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 the guitar but they didn't give up they sent him to rehab they worked with him and he sort of recovered from the from the alcohol problem uh, fast forward to say somewhere in the mid mid 80s uh, this u2 is on their on the world tour they are in las vegas and uh, they have back to back concerts uh, on april 3rd and 4th uh, and, and just before the tour they had re released an album called the, the joshua tree uh, and one of the songs in the in the album is called the pride which talks about martin luther king's uh, struggle for the civil uh, for civil liberties for the blacks it was a very popular song so just one day before the concert the group gets a threat saying if you were to sing the song you will be killed so obviously the the group freaks out and they don't know what to do they go to the police and the police say either you cancel the concert or you don't sing the song Uh, and these are the days when there were no metal detectors so they didn't have they didn't have time to sort of screen screen the visitors so they go ahead with the concert they don't cancel it and they sing the song luckily nothing happens uh, nothing happens so they relieve but at the end of the concert their manager turns around and says guys uh, april 4th is the day when when martin luther king was killed which was the the, the day after uh, which was the, the next day of the concert so obviously the group picks out Uh, and they worried about whether somebody would actually uh, uh, try and assassinate uh, uh, bono uh, so uh, they go to the concert uh, and uh, bono sings the song at the very fag end of the concert and when he's singing he's he's obviously scared he's worried so he's sort of closing his eyes and he's sort of belting out his song and when he opens his eyes he finds adam clayton in front of him shielding him up, 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 and sort of so anybody who had to kill bono would have had to shoot adam clayton first Wow. So, uh, Adam Clayton was actually repaying the debt uh, that he owed to the group because anybody they had to kill Adam Clayton first before before they had to kill Bono. Amazing. So again, the point is nobody is going to ask you to take a bullet, especially in a corporate setting. Means uh, the idea is the the point is will your team back up, especially when you are in trouble. And my point is they will if you have taken care of themselves, if you have taken care of them when they were down. So the the, the point is. especially in a team setting take care of your colleagues especially when they are going through a tough phase stay invested coach them mentor them just as this group did with adam plate and they put him through rehab and he and he recovered uh, as i say success has many foster parents means uh, in uh, when you are doing well you will have lot of people surrounding you but when you but but failure is an offer that teaches you a lot uh, but true leadership is when you are able to keep your te your team along over a long period of time and when you stand up for them when they are down they will repay the debt especially when you are going through a tough phase so it's it's all about winning together so my take away is from these three stories and and I'll stop there with this one is especially when you get into a corporate setting or uh, do the right thing always uh, you will always be tempted to take shortcuts don't do that means do what Very is important. important i guess you're off in the wrong run amazing coming from you yeah uh, swallow disappointments you will not have successes your career will not be a a 45 degree upward curve it will always be a seesaw you will have your ups you will have your downs uh, so manage that transition especially when you're going through the, through a down time a cheer your teammate means uh, especially if you are failing yourself uh, you might not have done well but if your teammate has done well cheer for him because it's eventually a team game and as sportsmen right and all of us are space sports it's never let your teammates down and especially when uh, if you speak to a, all of these big sportsmen it's not not about letting your teammates down it's not about letting your country down so and as i said team player is is not easy means and that's the reason most team players have a bad back so i'll i'll stop there so those are my sort of stories that i picked up and hopefully you can relate to some of the things that you do in 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 your in your teams in your respective Uh, college groups in your in your institute in your in when you when you when you work uh, yeah those are my sort of uh, key learnings all of questions are coming to my mind based on what you've talked about i think you can stop the screen share so that we'll be visible more on the uh, on the live broadcast it, sorry you didn't sorry you didn't you you learn need, you need to stop your screen share oh, sorry right? sorry okay sorry so uh, the first thing i mean when you're talking about being a team player so uh, i am let's say i am a 22 23 year old fresh guy coming out of college getting into the corporate sector uh, how what are the things that i should do consciously so that i become better team player so one is uh, have an open mind especially when you are very when you are new to the corporate world right and okay when i'm 35 and i'm leading people then i am okay taking care of people etc so uh, you and, must and what do i do so that i'm not just walked over 
because in the corporate sector that's also a possibility so one is if you have a strong commitment to to learn because all of us at least in the first few years of a career we are in a learning phase before we actually contributing so the first few years would you should be like sponge where you're absorbing a lot of stuff be inquisitive uh, uh, ask a lot of questions uh, where you're sort of learning what it takes to deliver as you as you graduate in the career the first few years would be a lot of lot of absorption is what i would need and uh, the ability to have an open mind and and be willing to learn would be very critical as you transition from being an individual contributor to a to a, to a, to a, a, a team leader for example so the first few years i would say keep an open mind be willing to take stretch assignments uh, stretch goals uh, that is what will ensure that uh, you are being reckoned as somebody who is willing to go beyond your call of duty uh, uh, as i said all of us have it have a uh, have so, a description so tell tell me from the top perspective do you do you do you really know your frontline the top the, these these guys who are coming in to your company do you keep watch that's And critical for me for visibility uh for my own sake uh, arun i spend a lot of time especially when you do field visits uh, i actually junk the powerpoint presentation actually go and work in the trenches sp spend time with your service engineers spend time with your sales engineers understand what's working what's not working what needs to be fixed because what you hear from them you can never learn from a powerpoint presentation so uh, if you can if you spend time in the trenches working with them you will get a lot of insights to what what's working and what's not working somebody who's doing who's doing his day work day in day out in the trenches he does get to because in the corporate sector absolutely and notice him absolutely there there's no it's 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 a no brainer means if you haven't if you're not doing it means i mean and that's how you identify talent as well means when you're spending time in the field you know who's good talent who can who's for the, for the long term where do you want to invest so gives you a, an idea of what the talent pipeline is who's plays where so gives you a very good assessment of what is what are your strengths and what are the development opportunities for the team themselves in fact uh, my by perspective is that i guess you can you can corroborate this point that as as a leader in your organization it's your responsibility to, to develop the next uh, the next uh, leaders in generation of leaders yeah at at and at, at all levels leaders at every level not just uh, who's going to be ceo after you but Absolutely. at every level and hence you would always be uh, looking at at each person's work critically and uh, and what what a what a young guy getting into the corporate sector or getting into any any job or any industry needs to do is just take care of doing his work well Absolutely. and advertise when he does something well Absolutely. that that take us mentoring and coaching uh, mentoring and coaching is a critical part of of at, at, across levels of uh, arun means uh, especially in companies like ge and shell which i have been fortunate of working with uh, these are very critical managers are judged on how much time are they spending on coaching and mentoring people uh, and and uh, it's it's a two way process means you coach but you also learn as well because especially uh, as you transition to senior roles uh, senior roles uh, you you got to keep up uh, from for your own perspective you got to keep learning and the the best teachers are the guys at the the the, the front end right so so very interesting what what i what what i can make out here is that the kind of character traits we see in a rahul dravid or an ishan sharma or any any great this thing i as an individual can actually take them take it up and make it my personal character trait that i i take a commitment to because you have to make your life choices each 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 individual has to make his life choices what he stands for and what he does not stand for so doing the right thing if you start standing for it through your career you might uh, miss out on a few shortcuts in life but eventually you will always make it that's what it is uh, the reason i picked ishan sharma uh, arun is uh, when i look at ishan sharma i look at mohammad shami i look at umesh yadav and when you see these come come and bad right even today ishan sharma will never give his wicket away although the other guys have got more skill uh, uh, and and shami and umesh yadav will come and make a few swings uh, hit a few sixes and then get out if you look at skills uh, they have better skills than him you yeah, know absolutely so yeah and this guy's got limited skills the way he's sort of maximizing it with 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 perseverance with dedication with hard work I'm saying hats off to this guy. He's the unrecognized, the the uh, the un unrewarded warrior in the Indian cricket team is what I would call him. Right. And what would be your advice to these young youngsters here who are who are watching our show about uh, taking disappointment? Because uh, as you you mentioned yourself, mentioned life is a is not a hundred meter sprint. So, um, so there are going to be lots of times we're going to on the short run lose an apparent losses, but you always come back. So what is your advice on that? Yeah, but, uh, that's the reason I said. Uh, 
it's very rare that you have a career which is continuously on an upward sort of curve. Uh, you sh you would have been very very like those are outliers or I would say you it's a career is always a it's like a seesaw means what goes up will come down. Uh, uh, and trust that what goes down will go up as well. Uh, even in my own case, I mean, it's 25 plus years, I've been through five or six restructurings. Uh, uh, I've come out on the right side a few times. I've come out on the wrong side a couple of times. Um, and I just give you an example, uh, especially when I had a very tough review with in one of those years. Uh, and uh, when you get a tough review, I actually went into my shell. Uh, I stopped attending conference calls. I would be late to office. I would be shamming. My one over one manager, he picked it up. He says, what's happening, Guru? Uh, you were not like this. And I had a chat with him saying I had a tough review. Means I didn't get a good rating this year. And he gave me a very good perspective. And that's the reason I picked up. He says, he said, uh, which, which year? Uh, uh, probably 2001, 2002, pretty early. Five, five years into your career? Yeah, pretty, pretty early. And I was, I was down in the dumps. Means, uh, I had a virtual manager uh, who thought I wasn't delivering on my targets. I was devastated. My bonus was, I didn't get a good bonus that year. Salary increase was very minimal. Uh, and uh, I was, I went into a shell it, and it's a very vicious circle. Man. You sort of tend to sort of go, go downwards. And luckily I had a mentor. Uh, and, and that's again a suggestion that I would get a mentor who will watch over you. I had a mentor who said, what's happening? This is not the end of the world. Then one bad year doesn't make a bad career. And I recovered from that. And, and that, that gave me a perspective. You might have a bad year, you might have a bad review. But uh, what defines a person is how do you bounce back? Uh, and uh, in the next couple of years, I did, uh, I, I got a global assignment after that. So I, I, I turned it around because the advice that I got from this mentor put, put life in perspective. It's not doom and gloom. It's one bad year doesn't make, make a career. That's why, and that's the reason I wrote a career is a marathon and not a, not a 100 meter sprint. And I've done well since, since then. And as I said, trust in your ability, persevere, will always triumph in the long, in the long run. Fantastic. Trust, trust. So I'm just taking out a few words that are, that are going around in my head right now. Trust, perseverance, keep doing the right thing, keep running the marathon, make, make, make relationships, make long-term relationships, etc. cetera. And, and, uh, and the first one you talked about, Start working hard in whatever you do, and uh, and you can't you can't ever be always be unlucky. You will be unlucky at times, but you'll always be also be lucky. Sometimes Arun, you got to have. I mean, luck does play a part. Means you got to be the right place at the right time to get that. But 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 again, I said nobody can be unlucky all the time. Right? Yeah, nobody, nobody can be just like nobody can be lucky all the time. Absolutely, nobody absolutely. Can be unlucky. Right. It's about when you get the luck. How much you do you do you jump on that? Absolutely. It's about absolutely. that, I guess. Right. Right. Wonderful. It was, it was a great, uh, this thing, Randhir Mishra is saying hi. Uh, he's on the chat. He says on, on YouTube, nice points, Guru, he says. Thank and, you, Randhir. Uh, for, for the audience, Randhir was, uh, was a prophet. I am Bangalore. Again, uh, somebody who joined us uh, at, at I am Bangalore. And uh, there's, there's a special question that one of my students has sent for you. And uh, maybe it does not relate much to the success angle and this thing. Does G oil and gas have any existing or future plans to use IoT and related technologies? And if yes, then what up to what extent? So uh, the business that I and we calling ourselves digital solutions because we do uh, some amount of uh, predictive analytics because of the soft uh, the hardware that we sell. As I said, we sell vibration monitoring equipment for rotary equipment. Uh, so there's a lot of data that we gather uh, and we've converted that into insights for in terms of predictive analytics for for for, for failures. Uh, we use um, uh, a, a lot of tools, uh, mainly that's been developed in-house. Uh, we also have a partnership with a company called C3.ai. Uh, and if people want to sort of do a Google on C3.ai, is probably one of the pioneers in, in, uh, in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So we, uh, we, we partner with them for solutions. We're doing a lot of work with Reliance in India, with Kane, uh, to improve the reliability, availability of their, of, their, of their refinery and equipment. So yes, we do. Um, and uh, uh, if somebody is interested, uh, reach out to me. I'm happy to sort of uh, discuss what, what possible opportunities are there out there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was such a, such a pleasure having you. Thanks for taking out the time. I know it's very valuable. Uh, even in the COVID world. Uh, a pleasure. Somebody like you taking out this time. And, pleasure. And, uh, a pleasure. Uh, I hope it was. it was. It was an awesome talk, I guess. Uh, and it was uh, very instructive. And I'm quite sure... Uh, 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 a lot of my audience uh, today will will uh, discover uh, 
these points i mean i mean of course you taken uh, taken these points today but as you keep going through your career over the next 15 20 years you you'll find fresh discovery to to how to apply these points again and again and again because life is an iterative process Absolutely. and uh, you keep iterating you keep iterating and you keep getting better and that's the whole idea absolutely and uh, any any uh, final message guru especially in the covid uh, in the covid world uh, so um, I, as i said at the very beginning wind up, uh, i'll leave the last word to you um, i i'm an eternal optimist uh, in the sense that uh, if you trust all the doom and gloom messages uh, uh, we would probably not have it tomorrow so i'm a pretty optimistic uh, about uh, about the future uh, given where we are uh, the economy uh, i can see uh, as recovering pretty quickly compared to the other geography so stay positive uh, opportunities will will come it's 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 a passing phase especially for the youngsters uh, uh, on on the on the on the on the call right i wish i was 25 years younger when sir uh, the there's, yeah. there's so much out there that you can go out and and achieve uh, so the, the world is there for all of you to go and conquer uh, so be confident uh, and uh, stay safe and stay healthy this is just a passing phase thank you thank you so much thanks guru and we'll connect back again and hopefully we'll have you again with a different uh, theme on the show hey, thanks arun thanks for uh, inviting me and i it was a pleasure talking to you and to your entire so best of luck to all of you guys